Eriri, Yui, Ram. What do they have in common? They were all rejected. In weird terms, we call them losing heroes. If Free Ren is about what happens after the Demon Lord is defeated, Too Many Losing Heroines is about what happened to the girls after the rejection. This is a story about how they deal with their rejections, move on, and grow from their experience. We have three losing heroines in this anime. Candidate number one, Anna Yanami. She's just like your mother but has 10,000 times the appetite. Also, is it a coincidence that their first names sound the same? The anime literally started with her getting dumped in the most dramatic way ever and is discovered by our male MC Kazuhiko Nukumizu. Instead of running away like a typical anime girl, she then forced the plot onwards by dumping her story on him. As a light novel reader, I can confirm that she is the most entertaining character in the anime. She is so goofy and I love her so much. Candidate number 2, Lemon Yakishio. Lemon is the bubbly sporty girl that we have always seen in Rom Kong anime. Most importantly, she takes on the fan service role Whoa. in this anime. In just the second episode, we are already getting the equipment storage room incident. As a professional weird myself, I would rate the scene 11 out of 10. They really bring the appeal of 10 lines to a whole new level. The saddest thing about her rejection is that she hasn't even got the chance to confess her love. She only learned about that by chance in front of our main characters. And can we give a round of applause to the director for how funny this scene is? Wow. Candidate number 3, Bochi. <coughs> Chika Komari. To compare Chika with Bochi is just not fair. She is way more awkward and she cannot speak a complete sentence without stammering. She is one of the three OG members of the literature club along with two other seniors. And guess what? She is in love with the leader of the club, but yeah, you know what happened. However, she is the only one from the losing heroines to ever confess. This scene in episode 3 was just pure savage. The way they played the background music while she mustered out her entire courage to confess was so messed up, not to mention the title drop after that. Savage, pure savage. And then there's Kaju, Kazuhiko's sister. Every light novel reader can agree that she is literally the best girl of this series. She makes food for you, she cares about you whether you have friends, she adjusts your tie, she holds your hands, she stays in your room all the time. What? Like, if she's not blood related, she can easily take the spot of Kazuhiko's girlfriend. So in this sense, she is kind of like a losing heroine as well. Oh hey Yuki, what are you doing here? As a light novel reader, one thing I love about this series is that every character has their own story. They are not just there because of the trope. When you combine these characters together, incredible chemistry happens and you get a great story. The author knows how to write a rom-com story that is not just incredibly entertaining, but most importantly, with depth. Our male MC's last name, Nukumizu, which literally translates to warm water, is literally just like his normal personality. His life is mundane, not interesting, he's got zero friends, zero love experience, and he loves to read light novels just like I do. We are seeing the story through his lens as an observer of our heroine's lives. If you learn chemistry before, water is called the universal wow. solvent because it can dissolve more substances than any other liquid. The Kumizu, like water, is the medium that brings the heroines with strong personalities together. Before we end this video, let's also talk about the elephant in the room, the animation. If you didn't know, the animation is so good, especially in the first episode because it was actually aired in cinema as a premiere in Japan. This is peak A1 pictures in action. The director Shiotaro Kitamura has also directed Kaguya-sama before, so the pacing, the framing, and the comedy aspects of the show is like 11 out of 10. It is just so good. I also like the aesthetic choice they made for the anime. At first I was kind of skeptical if the cinematic nostalgic tone of the lighting would fit into a rom-com like this, but it makes things feel so real. If you pay close attention to the background, you'll notice some scratches on the floor, which is really impressive. 
The opening of this show is probably my favorite in the history of rom-com anime. And trust me, I watch a lot. The tone is a contrast to the main show in the sense that it is so pop and full of energy. I've been listening to it on loop ever since I watched the first episode. There are so many amazing anime in this season, Summer 2024, but Makei Yin stands out the most to me and it seems that some of you feel the same way. This anime started airing pretty late, but you know what they said, save the best for the last. If you are a fan of this anime, please also read the light novel, it is just as, if not even more enjoyable than the anime. Let me know what you think about this anime in the comments below, like and subscribe if you want to see more content from me like this. This is your every senpai, and I will see you in my next video.